Hi guys, welcome to this session in LibreOffice Base Database. In this module, I want to show you how you can get started and create your own database. So first of all, I'm on the opening the screen and I'm going to select Base Database. Just double clicking on that. Comes up with this little wizard asking you, do you want to create a new database? Yes, I do. So I'm just going to leave all that as it is and follow the wizard through, go next. Do you want to register it? I'm not going to register it, so I'm just going to leave it on that. So now it's going to open the database for editing. So I'll go next and then finish. So it's asking me to save it. I'll call this customers. And then save that. And it opens up the database window. So I've got objects down the left, tables, queries, forms, and reports, and then options for each of those. If you click into each of those, you've got different options ready to get you going. Now the wizard says create table and design view, or use the wizard, or use this option. So let's have a look at the design view first. Click on that. You come into this grid area, but basically you have to tell a computer what the field names are and what the field types are. So if I just go, I'm just going to come onto the second line down for a second and just type in surname. Now, as soon as I start typing anything, it defaults to the text field type. If I drop that list down, you can see there's quite a lot of information there. This description area is where you're supposed to put information explaining what this field is about if it's not self-explanatory which that one is now i want a primary key in this field so the quickest way i find to get a primary key is to force the computer to ask you so i'll call this tbl customers so tbl customers and that's going to ask me do i want a primary key and if i just say yes it'll generate it up there look id if i just knock that off delete that one and then I can carry on with this so I've now got my primary key which is a number unique identifier surname and then I'll just have address and then city I'll just come down and do some simple things I don't want to put too many fields in there but you get the idea I'll do a date joined or a date yeah date joined let's do date joined that's a date and time field so so if I save that and then that's the structure and then if i close this down for a minute i can open it up down the bottom here and add start adding some records so here's the end product so start off with an id press the tab key so i'll put my surname in there and i can live at one red road press my tab key to come across leads Date joined, first of the first, first of the first 24. Press my tab, come down a line, and then it's record two and so on. So I'll just close that for now. When you close that, it's down here. You can just open it anytime, and then it'll open up that window again, and you can carry on editing. If I close that, so that was using design view. Now, if I create a table using the wizard this option you've got a few more things that you can actually select here so you've got it's asking you do you want to do a business table or a personal table and then you've got a whole series of options in this list whenever you click on if i click on that second one you see the field list change there the items or the available fields there's a lot more than there was on the first one which is just a task list so there's only a few there not many. If I come down again and have a look, you've got payments, all sorts of stuff. Customer, let's go for that one. And then you've got loads of fields that are appertaining to a customer, similar to what we just did there, but a lot, lot more. Now, if you want to take all of these fields across, you can click the double chevrons, or you can just pull across the ones that you want. So, for example, if you want your customer ID to be at the top, you've got that. And then you can just start double clicking on the fields that you want um 
I'll go for that one. And then surname. Oops. Lock that back if you do if you do it wrong. Surname. Address. And then we've got city down there. County. You can add other things later on. I'll just take the county across. So that's what I want. And then I'm following this list down. So I'm going next. Now it's asking me to set the field types. So I'm going to leave that one on what it's on. I'll click on title. That's on text. These are already set. So you don't really need to change anything on here. That's okay. So I'll go next. Do you want to allocate a primary key? I'm going to use that option. Use an existing one. Customer ID wants to be a primary key. And they can tick that auto value button there, which means it'll automatically increment when I add a new person. And then if I go next, it's asking me to name it. Now I've already got one called TBL Customers. So I'll put TBL Customers 1 like that. And then finish. So it gets that auto number there now. So I can just go Mr. Steve Saxton 1 Red Road County West York Shire. Press tab to get another one. So it started off with zero there. I could have changed that. So it started off with a one. This next one will be a one. I'll just put misses and tab off it. See, it does a one and then that automatically increments. So if I close that down and I'll get that one down the bottom there. And if I want to go into that, I can click on edit and I get into the same sort of area that I was when I did it manually, where you can just widen this. So even though I've created this through the wizard, You've got the um, the options down here, and you can see at the bottom you've got properties for each of these. So if you click onto each of these, the properties change, and you can select different things. There's no date on this one, but these will all be text, so they're all going to be the same. Length is set to 200. Do I need 200 for a title, Mr. And Mrs.? Probably not. So you can change that. That's 50 already, but you can knock it down even more than that. Surname, 200 characters for a surname, 50 it says there, and then an address. Now, that's all preset, so they've already done that. But on the one I did, let's have a go and have a look at that. Right-click on that one, edit that one. That's on 10, that number field. That's on 100. These are probably all going to be on 100, so I didn't change anything. Yes, they are. Okay, the date is not so surname, 100 characters, probably not. You might want to adjust that down to whatever, 50 maybe. And then that one address probably might even have to go up a little bit. But you don't want to leave these on the default settings, whichever whichever way you go, whichever table you're doing, manual or through the wizard, because it will allocate that many spaces, whether you use those spaces or not. So it's not good practice to leave it on the default. So I'll come off of that. So now I need to create a table about products so I'm going to do that through the wizard and one of the options in this list is products so that's great I'll select products now, I don't want all of these fields I just want a couple for this demonstration so product ID product name and unit price let's say that so those are the three fields I want for this table I follow it through go next um auto value put that to yes and we'll follow it through primary key use existing field i want product id to be the primary key it's on auto value next and then i'll call it tbl products and then finish and that'll create my little table now, when I look at that, that's not got auto number on there. So I'm just going to close it for a second and go into edit it. Edit. And just make sure that is the primary key. 
it's not an auto value so I'll put that onto yes and just save this change and while I'm in here I need to put customer ID which is going to be the field that will join these two tables together I'll save that and close it and then if I add a couple of products if I just double click on that and add a, there's the auto number um, I've selected the wrong thing there so let's just come back into that edit customer ID needs to be an integer not that that one has to be the same data type otherwise it's not having it so now I can go and do some products I'll just do a couple of products we go for Excel 250 customer ID one now I'll have to create a lookup later on for this so you can see how I don't, I don't know who customer ID one is customer ID two and then access 250 also customer ID two now that's some data there close that down for a minute so now I need to create a relationship between these two. So I need to go to the tools menu and select relationships. And then I get the two tables, which I can just double click on. And then close this. So there's products. I need to open that up a little bit. You don't have to. I'm just going to move that over there. Do the same with this one. You can get the corners. So there's a customer ID, which is a unique primary key. There's a product ID, unique primary key. So the link is going to be one customer and have many products. You get a one to many join there. Saving that, closing this window. So once I've created that link, if I go into query and I'll just use query design view, I can add the two tables again. So add, double click it and then close. It picks up the same link that you've just created in the relationship window. So now you can pull information from either table or both tables. Let's we'll get that to go a bit wider. So what I want is, in this case, the customer title, first name, surname. That's all I want. And it comes down there, look. And then the product. And maybe the unit price. Let's have a look at that. Let's save it first. It's called QR QR2. I'll just call it QRY Customer Products. And then OK to that. Close that down for a minute. So let's go back to the table. On the table, in the customers table. Um, that's a list of customers in the products table that's a list of products but some customers have bought things so when I run the query hopefully it should show me that information so you can see there John Jones has bought two courses you can see this price there so that's the query because I've pulled information from two separate tables this one I can get rid of, I don't need that query. So I'm just going to delete that one. Delete it. Now if you create a query like that and it doesn't show you the correct information, you just delete the query and start again. This is just the development part of the database. Lots of things will go wrong. You might find that you've missed off some information in these tables. You can go back into them if you go into edit and you can start adding extra fields if you wish and change the data type in these tables but that's all i want to talk about in this little video how you can create a relationship and then run a query from it so hopefully it's of use sweating your appetite as to what this is in the next section i'll have a look at how you can create a form and input data into your tables through forms one form two tables catch you on the next one don't forget to subscribe